Welcome to the Law News Docket, the part of the show where we review law-related stories in the news and how they affect us. Today we're going to talk about the effects of litigation on construction and subsequent development in our communities. The recent high-profile litigation related to the Kenwood Town Place project development has brought to light some of the possible effects litigation can have on a development and on a community as a whole. The original anchor tenants were supposed to be the container store, Crate and Barrel, Ethan Allen, Kroger, and LA Fitness. In March 2008, uh, Borders Books announced that it would open uh, a store in the complex stating it's going to be one of their new prototype stores. It, would be, it was set to be 28,000 square foot Borders new concept store. At the end of 2008 and the start of January 2009, several contractors filed almost $5 million in liens against the Bear Creek Capitals Kenwood Town Place. In late January 2009, problems with the development project began to surface as more than two dozen liens were filed that had a combined total of $17 million over a two-week period. While the liens were being placed, the complex was partially under construction and partially occupied by several stores, leaving them in a state of limbo. Bank of America filed a foreclosure lawsuit in the Hamilton County Court of Common Pleas against Bear Creek Capital and the developers of the Kenwood Town Place in May of 2009. Bank of America was seeking repayment of $81.3 million in loans and a sheriff's sale of the location. LA Fitness became the first tenant to sue the developers for $600,000 in unpaid construction cost. Kenwood Town Place was placed in the receivership in June 2009. Kroger closed their store in Kenwood Town Place on May 30, 2010. Uh, Kroger executive uh, stated that this is the first time that they've had to close a new store stating more than $8 million in losses. Joining us today is our special guest, Attorney John Higgins, who will uh, weigh in on this and uh, other uh, construction matters. John is a litigator and a member of the construction law group at Frost Brown Todd. He specializes in complex business and construction litigation, and he has litigated cases in 64 of Ohio's 88 counties. John, uh, you know, you were very involved in this Kenwood Town Place. What effects, short or long term, did this have on the community and these businesses and other businesses? It, you know, the, the failure of that project was really a disaster for the community. That all of Cincinnati, I would say for sure, that's the heart. Kenwood is the heart of the retail district in Cincinnati, and uh, Sycamore Township is where it sits. But if you think about that timing, 2008-2009, uh, that's when the national economy really started to tank. And construction can really be a good barometer for the economy. Uh, if the economy is going well, there's a lot of construction, there's a lot of development, uh, a lot going on. When the economy tanks, you know, construction uh, really dwindles. So on the particular, in particular, the Kenwood project, when that failed, you had uh, several subcontractors who weren't paid millions of dollars and uh, quite frankly, most of them never saw a penny uh, of the money. And it was very unfair that uh, people who showed up and did an honest day's work and put a lot of time and effort into that project didn't get paid. And the result on, for several of those contractors is they went out of business. Um, <clears throat> what you saw around that same period of time is as the uh, economy in general uh, floundered and construction floundered, you saw a lot of people leaving the construction industry and going into other types of work. Um, now, as we sit here today in 2015, the economy has come back somewhat, the construction uh, industry has come back somewhat. In fact, it's really starting to boom. If you look around town, you'll see the cranes in the air and whatnot. And there's a real shortage of skilled labor. There's a, a shortage of, of labor in general, but I think if I was in high school today and I wanted to make a, a good living, I would go learn how to be an electrician or a carpenter or, or some trade like that. Um, fortunately for the Kenwood project, uh, I represented the contractors who uh, had the glass, the steel, and the concrete, and they survived that storm. They're still in business today. They're thriving. Uh, they did recover some money from that project, and uh, most of them are working today on completing the project with the new ownership and the new vision. 
Okay. Yeah, it, we talked earlier off off air, and, and I made a comment that it sounded a whole lot like the Erpenbeck case from many years ago over in northern Kentucky, where a lot of the subcontractors <coughs> weren't paid, um, and a lot of those subcontractors went out of business, and in not only that, but a lot of homeowners suffered as a result of that. Um, similar, sort of, in this kind of situation? Yeah, I, I think it's very similar. Uh, Matt Daniels was the principal of Bear Creek Construction uh, in Kenwood Town Place, LLC. Um, <clears throat> think back to the um, origin of this project and uh, uh, how it all came to uh, uh, into existence, if you will. And Matt Daniels was sort of the guy who, who ran all that. And uh, the facts are very comparable to the Erpenbeck situation. The only difference is the result in the criminal trial. Uh, Mr. Daniels was uh, tried in uh, federal court and uh, was acquitted of all charges. Now the CFO of the Bear Creek Construction, uh, I believe, pled guilty to f uh, some felonies. You also, I think, talked about the fact that Norwood was in, uh, that the reason this Kenwood project became such uh, an important issue is because originally some of these tenants were supposed to be in Norwood? Yeah, sure. Let me, uh, <clears throat> really, uh, you have to understand the context of the Kenwood project. Um, initially, most of the tenants who were slated to go in at Kenwood were slated to go in down at uh, the second phase of Rookwood down in Norwood. Uh, and if you recall, uh, back uh, five years before uh, Kenwood got underway, early part of 2000s, uh, there was a lot of litigation with the city of Norwood and some homeowners in the whole uh, eminent domain issue. That went all the way to the Supreme Court. That's the uh, Norwood versus Gamble and uh, Norwood versus Horney cases that went all the way to the Ohio Supreme Court. For, um, for all of our viewers, can you give us a little more of a definition of the eminent domain and, and how? Yeah, sure. That's uh, eminent domain means when the government comes and takes your property. And the question is, for what? And, and they have to compensate you uh, when the government takes your property. It's not a desirable situation because you're not going to get top dollar when the government takes your property. Uh, it's much more desirable if you have a developer who wants to uh, put a mall where your house is, and, and you're more likely to get top dollar. So. Um, with that Rookwood uh, project down there, you had um, a developer who came in, offered people uh, good value for their homes, and most of them took it. 95% of them took the money. There were two or three families who held out and said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sell out. I, I wanna, I've, I've lived here my entire life, and I still want to. About four blocks from where I grew up, I might add. Um, <clears throat> so the city of Norwood said, we're going to force the issue, and uh, the government's going to take your house. Now the, the legal issue in the case and the practical issue in that case is can the government take your house for a purely economic reason? Uh, it's clear that the government can take your property for some uh, general um, uh, public use. You know, if they were going to make a park or widen the road or something like that. Mm -hmm. the, the issue was can the government take your house to help a developer with a commercial project? And so so basically what we've got is another construction law or a very similar type of law litigation situation that led to ultimately the Kenwood Town Center, which is what's going to be the subject of our next uh, section of our show. But if you could, could you summarize what the finding was from the court? Sure. In the um, city of Norway cases, the uh, Ohio Supreme Court said you cannot, the government cannot take your property for purely uh, commercial purposes. Uh, but th while that project was delayed, uh, other people came up with this idea, let's build this project up the road in Kenwood and attracted all of those tenants who were gonna go down at Rookwood up to Kenwood. And that's what we're gonna cover in the interview with the guest docket, of which you, of course, are the guest. So that will be coming up next. If you'd like to weigh in on today's news docket, go to our Facebook page, uh, Cincinnati Law Works, like us and follow us to get updates for future shows.